automation rules in Salesforce. What are my options? How do they work? Iman, break it down for me. Okay. All right. Well, so the first thing I should just say is automation is awesome. This is how you are going to scale. That's what the whole point of automation is. Now I want you to think about the right targets for your organization. All right. So think about things that people do over and over and over again. Think about things people are likely to mess up or forget doing, okay? And think about those things that don't require any skill. They don't require a human to make a decision and really think about it. I mean, you know, every two days, uh, two days after someone signs up, they're going to get an email. You don't need a person to be involved. They don't need to pay me an hourly rate to do that. Automate it, right? So think about things like uh, logging a voicemail and scheduling a follow-up call. That is something people do all the time, and yet uh, a lot of our customers make it really manual. Let me show you how to automate logging a voicemail and scheduling the follow-up task, okay? Also, things that people forget, not necessarily immediately, but you know, 30 days before a renewal, 180 days after they signed up. If there's time-dependent things that you wanna do later on, automation rules are great for that. Okay. Also think about those times you make your reps copy paste something. Hey, when someone signs up, take this info and fill out that form. There's no magic there. There's no logic or intelligence being used. It's copy paste. And if anything, someone's going to mess that up. So you know what doesn't mess up copy pasting? Automation rules. So that's a good way to move data around. Okay. Uh, and last, just like normal welcome emails, automated emails, automated replies. We should just be doing that all day. All right. Now, when it comes to making automation rules, you should know you got a lot of options. There's lots of ways to do this in Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to talk about Process Builder. This is a Process Builder stream, that's what I'm here for, and that's where we're gonna spend our time on. But you should know these other things exist and kinda of what they do, so I'm gonna give you a quick, broad brushstroke of these automation rule tools, and uh, you know we'll address them some other time. So approvals, you know, this is great where, think about a quote before you're allowed to put the quote in the uh, some stage or status that you can now send it out to customers, let's make sure it's approved, right? So you can set up approval processes in, in Salesforce that lock the record, they don't let more changes be made, and then they can go you know, from me to Michelle. And if Michelle approves it, it goes to the VP. And if the VP approves it, it goes to the senior VP. And you know that's as high as it needs to go in this case, and we're good. Uh, and people can even approve or deny in the app uh, in the mobile device or via email. So while you're in this live stream right now, you could have gotten an approval request and just replied approve and the process will continue on, okay? Uh, also, uh, there's an automation uh, toolkit called Workflow. For those of you that have been customers for many years, you probably have Workflow rules. This is great, they're powerful. Think of this as like the original or the old school process builder, um, but I don't recommend using these anymore. Not that you have to shut them down, but this isn't the newest feature set. We have a lot of newer automation tools, which is where I think you should be spending your time. So uh, don't build new stuff here, but maintain stuff there if you already have, okay? Entitlement processes are great for support automation rules, all right? So if you have a support rule, like when a customer is a gold customer, we need to respond to them within one hour. We'll have a tech on site within 24 hours. We'll give them chat support if they're a gold customer. Those kinds of entitlements or SLAs, you can manage in Salesforce with a feature we call entitlements. And you can set up milestones and we can run reports on this at the end of the quarter. How many SLAs did we hit? How many did we miss? And it even lets you set up automation rules around, ooh, we're 15 minutes away from the solution proposed milestone. What should we do? Should we escalate the case, notify someone, send an email, what do we do? So this is really good for support time-based issues. Then there's just custom code. You can write custom code for anything you want. And if you say, Iman, can I, and then you come up with a really crazy use case, yeah, okay, you can do that with custom code. So think about all the times where you need something very complex. This is an option. I don't recommend it for most people. I don't think this should be your first choice, but you should know if you want to do something and the standard point and click tools don't let you do it, you can probably just do it with code. But again, that's like a last option. And then there's flow. Flows are the automation rules that are the most powerful. This is a very complex uh, toolkit. It lets you do a lot of things, query records, update many records, create records, uh, and you can even have screens like wizards on the page. So if you want a wizard-like experience for people to go through or a widget that you can put on the page and people can fill out like an intelligent form, um, flows are a very, very good tool.
All right, so today though, we're here to talk about Process Builder, and this is really the good middle ground between creating records, updating records. This is the best combination of easy to use and powerful, okay? So in Professional Edition, you get five of these, okay? But each flow can go to many, 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 uh, do many, many things, or each Process Builder can do many, many things. So even though you have one Process Builder rule, it doesn't mean that it can only do one thing. That one rule can do one, two, three, four, five things, or, or as many things as you want, okay? All right, and so just make sure you use the right tool for the job. In this case, um, approvals for approvals. Start with Process Builder for pretty much anything else, and if it's too complicated for Process Builder, or Process Builder just can't handle it, then move to Flows. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend starting with Flows.